viewers and friends. Back to another watercolor segment with Laurel Hart. Today I'm going to be painting some of my very favorite subject matter, which is a figure again. And this will be um, taken from some of the source material that I gathered while I was living in Salvador, Brazil for three years. My husband and I were taking care of a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And we were in charge of the welfare, health, and um, well-being of uh, about 160 young missionaries. So needless to say, I didn't um, have painting as my focus at that time. But I did take a camera with me everywhere we went, and I ended up with such a great treasure trove of subject matter that um, it's going to take me long beyond when I'm in the grave to paint all of it. One of my very favorite places to visit um, while we were living there was a place called the Pelourinho. And it is one of the most famous tourist spots in Brazil. I came to really love this place in Salvador. Um, Salvador is the oldest city in Brazil. It was settled by the Portuguese centuries ago. Hence, they speak Portuguese in Brazil, not Spanish. But the sad part of it is that it has a very haunting history in that it's the place where the African slaves were brought over and sold right in that very marketplace. The Pelourinho actually means whipping post. And that was where these um, people from Africa were brought and bought and sold and publicly um, whipped as a form of punishment. There was really a poignancy to the Pelourinho, um, just a spirit there of great, um, great pathos of what these people have suffered through. And many of them are still suffering through poverty there in that area. But every time that I visited there, I just felt the great um, strength and courage that these people face as they struggle to lead their daily lives there in a very difficult part of the world economically. There are these women there that are um, called Bahian women. They are uh, dressed in white and they are the descendants of these slaves. And the women in the days of slavery actually became the spiritual leaders of their families because their husbands were working on the plantations. And so they became very strong, independent, and resilient women. And they still are today. And I came to really, truly love and admire and respect them and their culture. You do have to pay them to take their picture. That is their livelihood. And so I think I probably spent an awful lot of money in paying these women to pose, pose or to be able to take their photographs with their permission. Let me just show you um, a few examples of the subject matter that I gathered while I was there. I have just enormous folders full of photographs that I took and they're, they're really, really, amazing figures. Um, I, I'm just so drawn to these beautiful people there that live in this area of the, of the world. Um, and many of these ended up becoming paintings. This, for example, and this one have become um, watercolors that I have painted. These people came to know us as we would visit the Pelourinho often and really became our friends. And I, um, I love painting these individuals sort of as a tribute to them for the way that they welcomed us and um, treated us as friends in their beautiful country. So today I am going to be painting one of these subjects, this beautiful Bahian woman in her white clothes. And um, this is one of my very favorite subjects because it is a figure dressed in white against a dark background. 
I have got my uh, smaller source photograph taped to my board, and I have drawn on my my uh, figure here on my paper. I'm working on Windsor Newton. 140 pound weight, which is available again to purchase. I'm so glad they brought it back. But be a little cautious because I've found that it seems to have one side that is rougher and um, is the workable side. So make sure that you paint on the side that's got the roughness to it. I'm going to be working with um, a limited palette again today. And I will be starting off with a uh, um, a light wash to cover my page first, which I have done in previous videos. And I'll be using um, uh, manganese blue and uh, permanent alizarin crimson. And I want a more subdued yellow for this triad, so I'm going to use yellow ochre as opposed to one of the brighter yellows. And then as I come into the second wash, I'm going to be using a darker triad, still um, alizarin crimson, and then I'm going to move into a blue that has a little more depth to it and power to go to a darker value, which will be my ultramarine blue. And also I'll be using these, um, these warm browns, um, raw um, burnt umber, sorry, burnt sienna, and uh, transparent oxide red, particularly on the flesh tones of this um, figure. The brushes I'll be using today are uh, my Low Cornell um, number eight, and I've got a number 14. And then I'll be using um, my Winsor Newton Series 250, a squirrel mop brush to lay in that initial wash at the beginning. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to start with just a wash to cover everything in this um, subject that is not in um, direct sunlight. And part of the lesson that I want to um, teach or share with you today is oftentimes when we're painting a white in um, watercolor, we don't go to the value that it really is when it's in shade. And if you'll pay particular attention to that and get those values right, um, your, your figure will read more accurately and have more um, depth or dimension to it. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on as I paint this, is making this white um, still appear to be white, but still having other color brought in to make it more beautiful. And speaking of that, um, Always, I think our goal is to make the painting more beautiful than what the subject actually is. And so I hope to be able to produce that in my results today. So I'm going to start with a puddle of manganese blue, a juicy puddle of transparent oxide red, and then my, um, my um, yellow ochre over on the other side so I can keep the, keep the colors in a little bigger piles. And I'm not um, worried about if these melt and blend into each other. They are, um, they're going to be doing that on the page anyway. As much as I can, uh, help the, this triad mingle on the paper rather than on the palette, palette the more beautiful um, the results are going to be. So I'm just going to start laying in these colors, skipping over where, um, where my whites are going to be. And I am um, just going to keep moving down here. I'm going to love how um, love how this figure is going to come in and out of the background. 
in the end result. And at this point, I am not really um, going into my dark browns yet for her flesh. Okay, and then this, as you can see, I kind of shaded in a little bit of the, um, of her, of her costume in the, so that I would remember not to, that that's getting color and not staying as a white. I'm going to jump back out and finish going over the background here. I, um, I'm going to, the reason being, I want to come in with a, a um, darker or smaller brush when I when I start working on this figure I'm feeling like my mop brush is a little too heavy for picking up a little too much water so okay the the purpose of this first wash here is just to um, kind of get get the paper covered quickly to uh, get me freed up, get excited about this subject, which I already am excited about it, but I'm, I'm putting in a lot of color into the shadow area of her dress, and um, I may not keep it that colorful, but I might. So I have, I have the leeway when I've got that that um, first initial wash down that I can leave it that colorful or I can come back and tone it back down. And I've, I've said this before, but, um, but color, the, the most Brilliant color lives at about a value three or four. So if you want something in your painting to be very brilliant, um, you'll you want to put it in at about that value. Want to catch the wet edge of that uh, her feet here. Okay, and now that I've got all that background in, I am going to switch now to my smaller brush for working in the, the figure where I've got these um, smaller little pieces of shadow to, to get in. Okay. And I'm mostly um, mostly working from um, thinking in my mind warm and cool also. Her arm here is going to be very warm, so I want to keep that shadow underneath in a very cool, cooler pigment. going to lift that out. One of the really beautiful qualities of this Windsor Newton paper, I'm going to demonstrate it right here, is how, um, how well it can lift. So I'll see where I've missed the edge of my white there a little bit. I can lift that back out practically right back to white. And then the other the other thing about doing an initial wash like this is when you when you come back in sometimes there's not a whole lot left to do 
um, defining some really good darks and um, and getting some dimension in. And I kind of want to leave a bigger white there, so I'm not going to put all the shadow in there that really is there. Okay, so that is my initial wash. Um, I got that in pretty quickly. It's very, the color's very clean on it. Um, and now all that's left for me to do is to come back in with the darker values and um, make that figure really pop out. So I'm going to get my blow dryer at this point and um, dry this initial wash. Okay, we're back with um, the initial washes finished. I'm going to take um, a little minute to clean my palette. Uh, I'm going to start with a clean palette on these um, next colors. And like I said, they are going to be, um, the, the red is going to stay the same. I'm going to use the Permanent Alizarin Crimson, and I'm going to use um, now uh, ultramarine blue and I will actually probably use um, not probably I will use um, transparent oxide red as the yellow and also um, burnt sienna and burnt umber are going to come into these skin tones and um, so I'm, I'm working into the figure first, and so I will use my smaller number eight round brush. And I'm going to start up here on her, uh, her turban, whatever you call it. Um, and often on a figure, I like to do what is kind of a pull-down method where I will start at the top and continually work the wet bead of that paint down. Um, it may not be a continuous pull all the way to the bottom of the figure, but you'll see me do it in this um, top of her hat and then coming down into her face. I'll pull those colors together. That way you get a more fluid figure. You don't have too many stops for the eye to, um, I, I don't know, to fragment your painting. So I'm going to start with... Um, I'm going to actually put in a little bit of um, bright red where I can see these little folds of fabric back in here are coming. And then, um, boy, that uh, cadmium red is really, really potent, isn't it? Soften that out with the paper towel just a little. And then I can see that there is a little bit of blue blue in there too. There must be a print in that fabric. And then I'm still, I said I was going to use my ultramarine blue, and I am, but right now I'm, I want to get this little light blue uh, edge, shadow edge in this fabric here. Okay, and that is all actually shadow down in there, so I'm going to take that down just a little bit with a little water. And that little move, I just pulled the 
the water just carried those little lines just right for me. So take advantage of your the quality of your water and paint to move down the canvas. I've got my board on a slant. So I'm going to start working on the colors for her flesh now. Um, I'm going to pull in uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and also transparent oxide red, which will give a really beautiful red uh, highlight kind of in her flesh tones. And I will also use a little bit of ultramarine blue in that mix as I go to. I'm going to start back up here on her um, hat with a little more shadow on the folds here. And then what I'm going to do with that, as I mentioned earlier, is I'm going to pull that right down into her flesh tones so that I don't have a big hard edge between her hat and her, her uh, flesh. And because my board is on a slant, I just lied. <laughs> I said I was going to say it won't run back up there into her hat, but we can wipe that out a little bit. So I'm going to put in this profile. Got a little too much water on there. I'm going to try to leave that little white speck for her earring there. And you see now how there's this really pretty soft edge in between her, uh, her flesh or her face and coming down into, going back up into the hat. That just kept the figure a little, a little bit more fluid. Okay, and continuing down, there's this is going to be still in shadow here in between the necklaces. And I don't I don't remember what these necklaces meant, but they they have some spiritual significance to them. I feel like I want to pop a little bit of a little bit of red into her face there. Yeah, I do. And now I want to catch this side of her sleeve there. It's in light a little bit, but not all of it. So pay close attention to the to the details of what the shadows are doing, and you'll, and if you capture capture that uh, abstract pattern of the shadow, you'll get a very, a very realistic looking figure. Okay.
probably come back in and define these necklaces off a little bit more. There's a little bit of red, more red in here. And I can see some yellow in there, so I'm going to pop in some bright cadmium here and there. Okay, let's get her her arms in. They're going to be this same mixture, although her the palm of her hand is. A lot more of a redder, a redder brown. And then as it comes down here, it's going to go into this deeper, deeper umber. I love painting these uh, skin tones. Again, I'm just trying to copy those abstract shapes of the shadows in her hand there. Just some little highlights of sunlight on her fingers. And I'm kind of washing some of that out into the background. So that again, I don't just have a really cut out hard ed edge everywhere. I'm jumping over to her other arm now. One finger pointing down, and that's really dark. She's got these. Um, you know that's in sunlight. I'm gonna take it down just a little bit of a value. Okay, then um, she's got these uh, blue bracelets on. I wanna wanna get those in there. Okay, and then I'm just going to take a wet brush and wet that so that that um, color fades back up in but still leaves a, a highlight at the top of her arm. Okay, now, um, of course her feet are going to be dark too. Really dark down in there in the shadow. And maybe I'll leave just a little indication of a strap of her sandal. A little bit of negative space there too. Kind of. Just picking up the wet, <clears throat> the wet edge of my 
of my paint there so it doesn't blossom too much. And I'm going to kind of come back in here a little bit and I don't really know what she's looking at there, but it, I'm wondering if she was just looking at her watch. Okay, now I'm going to um, define a little bit more of the uh, folds of the fabric over in here with um, a little bit back to my original triad. So I'm just giving it another layer of dimension here on the skirt. And there's uh, probably the darkest fold is right here in the front. So I'll hit that a little more prominently. And then maybe just a little bit under in a few places here under that top, so that gets accentuated a little bit. That's another piece of her clothing. And I don't like how I kind of got this so piecey here. That's a little better. And now I think this is dry enough up in here that I'd like to put some little indications of that lace, um, the, that beautiful lace that they wear. It's just so pretty. And it's, it's, uh, I think they have different kind of meanings to the to the lace patterns that they wear. Some of them can be quite expensive for these women who wear these. That's calling out a little too much there. You kind of want to keep your, um, if you're going to put the pattern of those little lace dot things um, in, you kind of need to decide if you're going to put them in the shady part or the light part. Probably one or the other. I'm going to say they're going in the shade here. I don't think that's any rule, but it just um, just kind of breaks up the interest so that it's not repeated everywhere. You don't want to you don't want to overdo. Stuff like this detail. I think somebody said once just three fence posts is enough or three fence slats or something. Do it in threes.
So I'm thinking that's enough. The value in my photo is much deeper on her face than um, than I've painted it, but I'm I'm actually right now liking that lighter that lighter tone on her. So I'm going to leave that for now. Maybe come back in. Um, let's do a little bit with a background now. Um, But the, the thing that I wanted to um, kind of make my study about today is how much color can, can go into a white garment or a white house or a white anything and still read as a beautiful white. Now the thing that's going to make this girl or woman pop out even more is if I come back in behind her um, with with a nice dark and that is not deep enough pigment so I'm going to go And I want to set her off there, but right, right there where her, the shadow of her hat is, I want to bleed out into the background. And you'll notice that I'm using just those same tones again, so that there's a really nice harmony to the, to the painting. So you can see how she is popping out of that background. And I may just leave some interest in the back there. I'm not I'm not really concerned about that there's a figure back there. I'm not even really concerned that there's steps, but I may I may put a slight indication that those are those are back there. It seemed like these women were always standing in front of in front of the steps of a church so over here now i want to downplay the edges um, i i want this side of the figure to really come forward in the picture plane but not not so much um, not so much this side. Okay, so um, I'm just leaving more or less an abstract background here. I, um, I could go back in and define more things, but the, the main uh, lesson here is how to keep these whites colorful and still reading as a light, a light white value, even though they're in shadow. And, um, and I think that, I think that that's working okay. I'm just going to put a little more 
a light value down here on the foreground. And then I'm, I am going to come back in and define this, the uh, red on this hat a little bit. And maybe, I said I didn't want to put a hard edge here, and I may be wrong for doing this, but I am going to... Um, put that in and then bleed it back down into her face. So I still do have a, a softer edge there. And maybe just a little bit of definition on the bottom here, showing where there's there's another row of lace along the bottom of her skirt. And um, just showing you how I can utilize this pulling out, I'm going to put her watch in by actually taking it out. And then Set that part of her dress up just a little there. And there's a little bit of uh, shadow under here where her, her blouse kind of turns the corner, goes around the skirt there. Okay. I think that's got it. I like it. It's I kept it loose. Kept the color really clean in it and um I think you can see the um, the beautiful white in it. The other thing that I kind of wanted to say here um, as we wrap up is that it's really important that you paint subjects that you really have an emotional attachment to. That's why I set up that um, beginning part of the of the lesson today in telling you what these um, what these women mean to me because I've lived among them and I've, um, I've I've gotten to know them. When you have an affinity for your subject like I do for this subject um, from my mission experience uh, it will come across in your work and your work will feel more genuine and authentic and so if you want to love what you paint, then I would suggest you paint what you love. Thank you for joining me today. I've had a wonderful time doing this little demo and hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, we'll say goodbye.
a favorite art subject for me. It's a specific, oh, I'll cut. <laughs> Is there anything else I should say at the beginning? Um, this is one that I that I painted. Beautiful, beautiful European feel to it. The uh, Portuguese, Brazil. I don't know that I have anything. Okay. Should I just say I, we'd love? I'd love to hear your thoughts on what we talked about. I'll I'll say that. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what we talked about today and uh, share what you'd like in the comments. And um, I'll... Uh... <laughs> if you enjoyed this demo, then leave your comments for me. And um, I appreciate all the times that people share what they're thinking. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs>